Good afternoon, Floss Tube. This is Michelle at the Striped Rose, and this is my fifth podcast. It is June the 17th. It's a Saturday. It is blazing hot outside. Um, I'm sweating like a pig. I'm ill as a hornet. Uh, I thought I'd make a podcast. So, I have all kinds of stuff around me. It's been longer than I meant to. Um, I like to record every two weeks because it keeps everything down to a manageable size for me and I remember what I've been doing. So today I'm going to try to keep this one shorter and I'm just going to do cross stitch. Um, I've started a million socks, knitting socks, started a shawl, bought yarn for another shawl, finished some socks, um, but they're all over the house. I mean, that's the thing about knitting socks is they're just, they're in the car, they're all over the house. Um, I didn't have the energy to get them up today. And I'm not going to do books or, is there something else I talk about? I'm not going to do those today. I'm just going to do cross stitch. So, um, I had an MRI on Monday, finally. Um, I started having back pain the first week of March. I waited about six weeks to go to the doctor because... I don't run to the doctor every time I have a backache. Um, so I ran to the doctor in the middle of April. And the middle of June, they're finally going to start treating me for what I have. So um, I'm hoping that <laughs> I'm hoping that now that they know what they're treating me for, that things will go a little bit better. Um, I was not happy about the MRI at all. I'm very claustrophobic. I get claustrophobic on a cloudy day. It's not good. Um, so the first time I went, um, I told my husband, I made him promise, if I need to leave at any time, you're going to take me home, right? He said, of course. Well, I needed to leave before the MRI. So he took me home. And my parents found out. So well, I guess it was just a couple days later, both my parents frog marched me down to the MRI place and told me I wasn't leaving the building until I had an MRI. And my dad went back with me, and I was just thinking, you know, how wonderful it is. You know, he, while I was in the tube, because it was a tube, I don't care what they say, open my foot, it was a tube. Um, he, he patted me on the shoulder the whole time. He looked in at me, looked in the tube at me. An open MRI is not open. It's a tube. It is a tube. You are in a tube. He had to reach his arm in the tube to pet me. He had to look at me through the tube. I had to look back up through the tube. Open MRI my foot, and the volume never kept in. So so then I started wondering later, was my dad really just patting my shoulder the whole time, or was he <laughs> forcing me to stay in that tube? But um, that's pretty amazing that, that somebody can go back there with you. And, um, and as far as it being loud, um, you know, my dad had been in, in a regular MRI tube, and my husband had been in a regular MRI tube, and they told me it was extremely loud. So um, I don't know if the difference was that this was an open MRI tube, but it wasn't. It wasn't that loud. I was listening. I had earphones, and I was listening to. Um, I told him the classic rock station, and a lot of times I really couldn't tell if it was the beginning of a Led Zeppelin song or if it was the noise of the MRI starting back up between scans. So the noise was not the problem. Uh, it was not the problem at all. The problem was I thought it was open and it was a tube. A tube. Anyway. I finished um, this Rosewood pen keep by she has another name she designs under Nikki's Creations, maybe. Um, this was in a 2015 Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly. And I, I finished stitching it. Called for DMC colors. There's absolutely nothing wrong with those DMC colors. They're perfect. And I'd like to make it into a little pin keep. Probably not a pin keep. Uh, I'm trying to think. If I'm wearing pajama bottoms or not, I have an actual pin keep over there. Um, and I don't think I'll risk running over there to get it, though. 
Um, but I think I'd like to make a pillow out of this. And I'd like to put um, some pins, just a few decorative pins. This is all I have from when I made pin keeps a lot, or made them often, just these little pearl. Maybe one of those, but then I'd like something else in there, something else that looks Oh, those are hat pins. Vintage, um, but I don't know that I want it like a, one of the clay ones. Um, so I'm not sure. So if you see somewhere on eBay or Etsy somebody that has uh, <clears throat> several or a little, a small lot of some sort of vintage she looking pin that would go with this, not clay, just some sort of interesting pin heads. Um, let me know. Send me a message. Um, because, <laughs> as you'll see, um, while my back has been out of whack and I'm, you know, don't sit, lie down. Well, the only thing you can do is shop, is lie down and shop. And you'll see that I've gotten much too good at that. But I think that's lovely. I think that's lovely. So I finished that. That's a small finish, but it's a finish. Now, the next thing that I finished, I was so excited about because I thought this has been so many years in the making. Well, my bubble has been burst. This is, I'm sorry the camera's so high today. My husband got me a new tripod and I'm, I need something better to set it on. This is a coffee mug. The design, I think it's Never Let You Go by Heartstream Samplery. I'm sorry about the glare. It's cloudy, there's trees by the window, and I've, I've just tried to open all the windows I could. You can buy the mugs from her Etsy shop, Heartstring Samplery. And as you'll see when I show you my, my shopping, um, I must, I'm, I've always loved Heartstring Sampler ever, ever since she started, but lately, just every design, um, I just is just perfect. But anyways, she has several coffee mugs that you can order. They're sixteen dollars, I think, maybe, in her Etsy store. Or you can buy a five dollar download of this pattern, a baby it's cold outside pattern. Which I think that's the cutest song ever. It is not a date rape song. Stop trying to ruin my Christmas holidays. Ah. Oh. Baby, it's cold outside. It's cute. It's innocent. It's sweet. Anyway, uh, baby, it's cold outside design. Uh, the the colonial lion, black and white colonial lion. Uh, first, I drink the coffee, then I drink the things. So you can buy those downloads for five dollars, and then you can use them to get your mug printed wherever you want to, as many times as you want to. So I did that and I got one for me and I got one for my mom for Mother's Day and um, I got them at Costco. And I really like this handle. I get so jealous when I see um, people with their Emma Bridgewater mugs because I love the shape, especially at the bottom, of an Emma Bridgewater mug. I just think that bottom shape is so beautiful. But I really like a mug I can put my hand into. So this is the Costco mug. And um, I think it wound up, I think they were like $9 each at Costco. Um, so that's, so for, he said, I reckon for my first mug, the $5 download plus the $9 mug, I paid, um, I paid about $14. So any other time I get this mug, I'll pay nine. So I think that's a really good deal if you want to do the hassle of driving to Costco. Um, Christmas stitching. Um, I thought I had a finish. I told you, I think in my first video, that my mom and I had started this belt pull. Because um, she has all the Santas, the Prairie Schooler Santas. And I just told her to pick, I thought I told her to pick three. So, I just, I finished this third one here. And I was so excited. And then I thought, wow, that's, that's a lot of fabric that I left at the bottom. How odd, how odd I left all that fabric at the bottom. And then I was looking at a blog post, an old blog post that had come up on my Facebook time machine. 
and I think I posted it on Instagram where my mom did a guest post on my blog and we were we were talking about this we were talking about how we were going to pick four Santas for the bell pull so what I decided to do is I am going to go ahead and put the fourth one on here bell pulls should be long um, but I'm going to put it aside for now because my plan in my rotation, which I've been, I've been working away on my rotation, was to finish a piece, when I finish a piece, begin a new piece, or draw something out of my enormous stash of UFOs and finish that. And so when I thought that I was going to be finished with Santa, I was already looking forward to a UFO, to getting it a UFO going. So I've decided I'm going to go ahead and do this UFO, finish it, and then go back to the Santas. So this UFO is by Bright Needle, and um, I don't think they design anymore. And sometimes their designs go for just ridiculous amounts of money on on eBay. They just beautiful designs. So I found this design in Better Homes and Garden, a cross stitch Christmas. Um, 2001. And I would just pick up these sometimes. I have a couple of these. I'll show you another one in a minute. And I would pick them up at um, you know, like a used bookstore or something. But that one, I definitely got this magazine, I mean this book, for this design right here. Um, one of my very favorite Christmas hymns is Lo A Rose. Um, I love it. I love Bright Needle, and I love these colors. I love their wonky little letters. So if you're not familiar with this hymn, it's Lo, well it's, in, it's a German hymn. Via Stein Rose, I think. Um, but the translation is, Lo, how a rose air blooming from tender stem hath sprung. It came amid the cold of winter when half spent was the night. No, no. Lo, how a rose air blooming from tender stem hath sprung a flower bright. It came amid the cold of winter when half spent was the night. And these are, um, over dies. And I have no idea why in the world that I chose to do it on this white, gauzy, see-through fabric. I think I wasn't as comfortable stitching on darker fabrics. I didn't understand or appreciate how lighter colors pop and are accented by a darker fabric. And these are such delicate pastels, and it's an over dye, so it's even more delicate, some of these colors. And I guess I thought a dark fabric would compete with them, when really it would have um, accented them better. And it's just going to be a pain in the tail to clean this up, to clean the back up when I frame it. I don't carry threads, but I don't like to clip them close while I'm working because if stitches, if they start to work out or stitches need to be tightened up or something. But then I'm always a little impatient when it's time to go to the framer and I need to clip all these little threads close because you know every single one of them is going to show through the back, you know? Every little bitty waggledy tail is going to show through the back. But I think I have all the colors. So I'm going to stick this in that rotation spot, finish this, and then go back to um, the Santa. I'd like to always keep a spot in my rotation for larger Christmas projects. Um, I stitch a lot of ornaments. I don't tend to finish fully finish a lot of ornaments, but I do stitch a lot of cross-stitch ornaments. Um, 
but I also like to have, they're not large projects, they're more medium sized projects, but because I stitch little, little ornaments, I think of these as larger Christmas um, projects. So I wanna show you some that I have stitched and then I wanna show you some that I really wanna stitch in that spot in my rotation when I finish the Santa Bell pull finally. This, I think you'll all recognize, points at a house and I, I don't know if this is um, Country Cottage or if this is Little House Needlework or if this is before they um, divided, but I'm looking at the back and you know it looks as neat as it can be, but before I frame it, I'm gonna have to go through there and snip all those little tiny bits because they will show through the back of the fabric and drive me crazy. Now, um, I know you all watch Vana and this is the design that maybe two years ago for Christmas, she took this motif, these poinsettias, which is the most beautiful and stunning part of this design. And I think she did it one over one and she made an ornament for each of her two daughters of just this motif right here. And they're beautiful. The daughters and the ornaments um, are absolutely beautiful. And I love how that Vonna can look at a pattern and pull out one motif and say, that can be an ornament or a pin keep, a Christmas pin keep. That would be um, your Christmas pin keep basket, your Christmas smalls basket. I mean, that would be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So it's beautiful either way. But um, so that's one that I did that obviously is too large to be an ornament in itself. Um, I love shepherd's bush. I love even the old shepherd's bush when it was those little round weeble wobble people um, and the little little odd verses that she would put, they would put in their samplers. I love it. Um, I don't do a lot of it because it it's not my stitching style. It's a style that I like to look at and I think is beautiful, but it's not my stitching style, which I don't know, I showed you with the Easter rabbit, my stitching style can be very, it's a very flexible, oh my goodness at the threads. Whoa, I always thought I didn't do things like that, but I guess I do. This was from a magazine, and if you want me to look it up, I will, our air conditioner is out upstairs. Supposedly they're coming on Monday to, to put in a new air conditioning unit upstairs. So when I was trying to gather this stuff, I was getting awfully hot. <laughs> so I know this is from a magazine. Um, I stitched it in 2010. I know it was from a magazine, and if you want me to look for it, leave a comment, and I will look it up in the magazine um, on Monday when my house cools off upstairs. So it says, far away on Judah's plains, shepherds of old heard the joyous strains, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. And it looks like it is over dyed. And I really love my favorite, I gotta move my coffee out of the way. My favorite over dyed, I don't know what this is, that ecru color that has like a, a little bit of tea staining in it. That is just so pretty. And actually, I think everything I've showed you, the pin keep, the rosewood pin keep was stitched on antique ivory. These two have got to be, um, these two pieces, and then the next two I'm gonna show you, I think they're all lamb's wool. It must be Wichel lamb's wool, is that the one with the orange? But look, and the what in the world is this rat's nest? Look, look at that. I don't even know what I'm going to do for that. I try so hard not to carry threads because I don't want it to pull my work and I don't want it to show through on the back. Bas that's really all. Um, I know there's some big debate about judging people's backs. If it doesn't bother you, carry your threads. It bothers me in my work because I feel like it pulls. I feel like it pulls the piece. I have done it enough <laughs> to, to think that it pulls my, my fabric um, and gives me some odd little puckers. And also, I cannot stand looking at my work and seeing all the little tails and all the little pieces of thread showing through. And I, uh, 
there's one by the coffee pot and every morning when I get coffee I sit there and think well I spent all that money to get that framed and I didn't clip those threads I think that every morning so I don't know what was going on right there that's unusual oh look at there talk about not carrying threads apparently in 2010 I was into carrying threads um, so anyways this was a pretty one and it's from a magazine tell me and on Monday I'll go up there and hunt for it but I'm not going up there before then um, now this was a in an ornament edition I did this in 2010 which is probably about when it came out you know this is Plum Street Samplers and I don't know if it was called for to stitch it on 40 count or 36 count I don't know it may have been called to stitch it over one it looks like I stitched it two over two on 32 count so it's not ornament size anymore um, but it's still cute. It could be a flat fold. It could be in a little frame. Um, little frame sitting by the Christmas tree or under the Christmas tree. Or we, um, we have a Christmas tree. We have an artificial Christmas tree. And it's beautiful. It has white lights. Um, I grew up with multicolored lights, multi-Christmas trees in the house. Um, my mother would eventually started getting out about one third of her Christmas ornaments every year because she has so many Christmas ornaments most of them are Hallmark Christmas ornaments I mean you know we could do the whole we could do a whole Christmas tree in movies you know like Wizard of Oz Star Trek Star Wars for a, she hasn't done it in a while but she used to do a tree in the dining room and she would set the uh, eight inch or the six inch size maybe the six is there a six inch Madame Alexander doll she would set the little women I don't know if she did little women and gone with the wind or just little women um, Madame Alexander dolls in the tree and then some Victorian um, ornaments it was it's really pretty there's just so many things you can do with Christmas trees so we have a Christmas tree my husband is a white lights only no multicolored lights whatsoever at all and it's a really pretty one I'm sure we got it at Home Depot or we may have gotten it at Hobby Lobby and it has little fake pine cones on it and uh, some red berries here and there and we decorated it this past year but the year before last we didn't decorate the tree <laughs> we put our tree up about um, we celebrate like the old school Catholic Christmas from December 25th to February 2nd so I know it's 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 all out of sync which has its its good points it does have good points and some bad points so we usually set up our Christmas tree um, like around the 21st and then we decorate it on the 24th before we go to uh, midnight mass at 8 o'clock <laughs> um, so so what Two, a year, the year before last, we put up our, our tree, our beautiful big tree with the white lights, uh, you know, around the 20th or the 21st, and we looked at it, and we just looked at it, and we thought, it's so pretty. And nobody ever said anything about getting the ornaments out. And, you know, we were into the 12 days of Christmas, and I said, don't we need to decorate that tree? Like, no, it's beautiful. It's just this green fake um, very attractive fake tree with these white lights and it's just so peaceful and so calm um, because when my children decorate our tree they just throw it on there um, I've got Hallmark ornaments from when I was um, little my mother my mother would always get a cat for me a bear or a frog for my brother and a mouse for my sister um, so I've got all these cat ornaments from the 80s um, and then the, the, the ones the children have made and that their friends have given them and just I mean it's just ragtag which is wonderful you know I, I've never in my life had a coordinated tree where everything matched I just throw it all up there but for this one year, we just wanted this calm, peaceful tree. 
and um and then this past year we threw up all the crazy wild ornaments again i don't know we just sort of all agreed that we just needed a peaceful tree that one year i don't know now we do set up a big nativity scene i collect fontanini nativity pieces and um it gets it can get bloody when we set up the nativity scene we set up the nativity scene a little earlier um it's getting earlier and earlier every time you know into december and mary margaret has very definite ideas and bella has very definite ideas and it's my nativity scene and i kind of have some ideas and jerry just sort of stands back and and watches us and and people people move the nativity scene and they move things around and we've got animals and yeah you know who i'm talking about did you find that well that's what happens when you clean your room it's amazing it's like having christmas it's like having christmas isn't it okay one time scarlett o'hara showed up at the manger scene because this is georgia after all um so stay tuned for that stay tuned for the nativity scene I think we put all our energy into the nativity scene. Um, and it's not just, you know, the Holy Family. We've got the city people and the Roman people and the, um, we're working on a marketplace. We're building it up slowly. You know, I'm not buying the $200 Fontanini pieces. So we're having to make our hillsides out of, you know, books covered with fabrics and things like that. So it's not, um, it's not my children's college fund, which I think you could do with Fontanini, but anyway. Um, the fourth, the final medium to big Christmas piece that I've done, and I would leave this up all year. This is Mary Beale, B-E-A-L-E. -E. And if you stitched in the 80s and the 90s, early 90s, you know who Mary Beale is. Now, if you don't know who Mary Beale is, this is a good introduction. Very lush um, floral designs. These are some of her colors that she uh, uh, that she uses. But I would leave this up all year long. I think this is that is at six thirty two that I like so much. Now Mary Beale has a website, and what she's done is she's digitized her patterns. So you can go to her website. I don't think she's blogged in several years, but her blog pages are beautiful. She has a very beautiful aesthetic. If you like, you know, Tasha Tudor has an aesthetic. Um, Mary Beals is different, but it seems to come from that same colonial, um, colonial aesthetic. Anyway, she's digitized her pattern, so you can go to her website, and I have no idea what it is, probably marybeal.com. There's a female artist, I think, I don't know if she was from the 1700s, named Mary Beal also, and so a lot of times when you look up Mary Beal on the internet or on Pinterest, you'll come up with this female artist. So Mary Beal has a website, and you can go to the shop, and you can buy di digital copies of all her patterns so she has a lot of patterns I'm sure you've seen the Mary Beale stockings that people have done um, but she also for I don't know a couple of years published a little magazine called pocket work pocket handwork something like that and before Wyndham needlework do y'all remember Wyndham needlework I loved I loved shopping at that website before they went out of business I remember I bought a lot of the pocketbook, pocketbook needlework, that's what it was, pocketbook needlework um, editions, but I think most of them you can buy as downloads, and they just have small designs, this would be um, a mid-size design, she has smaller designs, designs this size, and then she has a couple of larger full-on sampler sizes, plus her sampler stockings. Um, I told you in my first video that I have a fangirl attitude towards Dawn Bradford of Sheepish Designs. And I called her, I 
found an old phone number and I called her five or six years ago on the phone and I told her how beloved her designs still were and I had just sold a copy of one of her um, I don't even know what I'm talking about right now I don't know where I was going but I guess I'll stay on this story for a minute I had sold on eBay I didn't list it at $30 because that's ridiculous but I had put it out there and the bidding had gone up to $30 and I sold one of her patterns for $30 and I thought that's disgusting that's absolutely why should I get $30 for this work that that she did um, so I called her and I told her that I said I just sold Phoebe tree for $30 on eBay and she laughed and she said I can't tell you how many of those charts I've thrown away and I said people will buy your charts I said I just feel bad that people are still buying and selling your charts on eBay and you're not getting that money and I and I was telling her about Mary Beale's website I said Mary Beale has it all digitized all her charts are digital you pay you get sent the download and she just you know she said I'm just not interested I'm not interested in cross stitch and then she she is very pleasant you know very pleasant especially to some random stranger who called her and was begging her to digitize all her charts which I imagine is probably a pretty big undertaking but she started telling me about some of the projects you know the, the crafting that she likes now and she told me about a niece of hers with a website you know that does gardening and it's very nice very nice chat but um, she was not interested in digitizing is that a word in making her charts digital not interested in doing that but I just thought that was so funny when I was telling her about the Phoebe tree chart she said I just can't tell you how many of those I threw away oh. anyway I was going to show you another book this is the book that I got that Mary Beale pattern out of I own a lot of digital files of Mary Beale patterns but this one I actually found in this a Leisure Arts publication, Christmas Traditions. This is the front cover. And again, probably something I picked up at a bookstore, used bookstore. And no date. 2001. Is this the same book I was looking at a while ago? So there's what the cover is. And I mean, I, I'll just show you some of the pictures in case you're looking, in case you're wondering if this book is worth you hunting down. I'll just show you some of the other things. I don't know. I think that's kind of scary, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about soft sculpture um, cross stitch. I have the patterns for Fontanini cross stitches that you're supposed to cut out like that. And then I bought something I've got to show you that's like that, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about, I guess. Maybe I do like it. Maybe I do think it, it's creepy. There's that Santa. That's a nice Santa. Botanical ornaments. Oh, come all ye faithful. It's on the cover of the book. I like these. I've thought about these before. Um, I, I, just, I think it's that plaid that I like. I don't know if I'd like them so much without the plaid. A woodland Santa ornament. And again, I'm just showing you these really quickly in case you're, you know, wondering if this is something that you really would want to track down. Um, just let you know, because sometimes I think, oh, I like that design, but before I would buy the magazine or the book, you know, I, I, there would have to be two or three designs that I liked to justify me hunting down. Um, and here is the Mary Beale. It's beautifully framed. And there's also, Mary Beale has done a lot of ornaments, Old Testament ornaments. And I've done a lot of them. 
I may have done all three of these. She has a, she has a couple of leaflets of Christmas ornaments. And then maybe in the pocketbook needlework, she has a whole series of what she calls Advent ornaments, which are Old Testament Bible stories leading up to Christmas. And then there's also that little angel at the top. She has a lot of angel designs, look like mid medieval Renaissance angels. And then she has a couple of other patterns elsewhere. These are called, she calls them wreaths that she would hang on the back of a door or on. And I've seen some of them, the bigger ones. There's a sampler wreath, wreath where the center actually is cut out. It's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Christmas tree. Chorus of Angels. It's a pretty rich um, coloring. Santa bearing, ha ha ha, bearing gifts with a bear. Maybe they didn't mean that to be a pun, but more bear stockings. I don't think this is going to be as quick as I thought it was going to be. It's kind of interesting. They have St. Joseph done in half stitches in the back, which kind of makes it look like he's dead. These I really like. I like I like Christmas decorations. I like botanical. I think botanical Christmas decorations. I have a couple of Port Marion um, ornaments on my tree. I kind of like the idea of botanical Christmas ornaments. And that's all that's in that book. So, if you like the Mary Beale ornaments, but I strongly recommend, also on her website, you can see, there's maybe a dozen links on her website to fan pages, where someone who has stitched a lot of her works shows off those works, and with pictures in their home, as well as close up, and some of those Christmas trees and the Christmas samplings really really impressive if you like that that rich really rich vintage style um, it's already almost 40 minutes if you want me to flip through this sometime uh, let me know I won't do it today since I've already flipped through this one so those are some medium-sized pieces I've done for Christmas. And I wanted to show you a few that I'd like to, to, to do next. This one, I always think I've lost this one because it's not in a Christmas Blackbird Design book. It's in With Needle and Thread by Blackbird Designs. And it's um, Let Heaven and Nature Sing. I would keep that out all year. My holly trees are out um, in the yard all year. Tulips aren't even blooming at Christmas, so I, I let heaven in it. I don't see why this couldn't stay out all year. I think it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I guess I don't think holly leaves, I guess they don't strike me as something that's just for Christmas, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I know that's a Christmas carol, but now this. This, this one's kind of odd. This is from January 1991 for The Love of Cross Stitch, a leisure arts publication. And it has this piece that's been distressed. Now, I think it says, Hosanna to the Lord, by children he was welcomed on earth, by angels in heaven adored. Now, when I say by children he was welcomed, it is not charted to say was. Those aren't letters. There's three motifs, but they are not letters. I don't, I'll let you, sh this is the picture that's not been distressed. That does not say was, or does it? I don't know. Does that say was to you right there? By children, he, does that say was? I don't know. That's weird. But of course, what I love is this right here. Oh, the color isn't really... There's a bunch of colors in there. 
I don't know if they're not really all showing up. But that is one I would like to do. Um, this isn't high on my list, but I have it. It's a Blackbird Designs. I mean, you can't go wrong with the Blackbird Designs. It just says Merry Christmas. It's just fun colors. It's fun colors. It's not a priority. That one's not a priority. There's something else. Now, this one I've had forever. Patricia Andrel. I think she's the mother of Patricia, Patricia Andrel. A-N-D-R-L-E. She had counted illuminations. A lot of um, rich, rich colors, medieval designs. Completely different than Mary Beale. Um, and her daughter, I think, is Elizabeth. Elizabeth's designs. Look at this one. I think it has two over dyed threads. I think this green in the vine and then the brown and the deer, the only two over dyed threads. And I love those Dutch sampler letters in Mary. I just think that is so pretty. Now, this one might be a little harder to find if you're. <laughs> I don't even know how I came across this. This was in a keepsake, 2002. Uh, calendar. So that was for the old year's December. I'm just going to split through this to let you know if you thought it was worth looking up. So I'm in. Heart. I think that's probably what I got it for. I like this style. I like the Jacobean Tree of Life. I like the, um, what's that man's name from Pennsylvania? Uh, Edward Hicks, Peaceable Kingdom. I like all those things. I don't know that this one was particularly well executed. Um, a nice little sampler about herbs. You know that's a Lizzie Kate. A little wedding sampler. Yankee Doodle Dandy. Uh, farmer's Market. I love that. That would be pretty. Halloween. And you could use, you know, you could just take those motifs off. The little smalls. You know, use them individually. This I love. This is Bright Needle. This will have to be done. Each day, bring it. A harvest of blessings. That's beautiful. Right. And then there's the Christmas for that year. So, if that's something that you want to hunt up. Alright, so those are... Oh, oh gosh, it's 43 minutes. I haven't even told you what I started yet. Okay, so... I pulled another uh, design from the UFO. Now, I bought a couple of these. I can't make Vonna bags fast enough. Um, I've bought a lot of fabric lately, but um, standing and ironing, and I just haven't been able to do a lot of that lately. Number one, because I don't have any air conditioning upstairs where the ironing board is. So, in the meantime, in the meanwhile, I got some of these bags from the container store. You almost got locked out, didn't you? Um, I saw it on Running Stitch. I love the Running Stitch podcast. And um, have you read that book before? Okay, mm -hmm. hand me that book. I wasn't going to do books today, but this is a good one. Have y'all read I Capture the Castle? This is a really, really good book, and it's a fun movie. Have you seen the movie? Mm -mm. Well, you're always saying you want to do girl stuff with me. Maybe we can watch the movie together. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say hello? No. So Mary Margaret is reading I Capture the Ca Castle again. So I guess you would recommend it, right? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Go away, child. Go away. Go away, child. I love the Running Stitch podcast. Am I giving you whiplash with my, my uh, pinging off the wall conversation? And she had mentioned these on her 
one of her podcasts that she got these at the container store. And of course what got me is this color. I love this whole family of these shades. So I got a few of them. I've broken a zipper off already. Um, well, that's the one I put some sock knitting in and I did overstuff it, so that might have been my fault. But they don't make my heart happy like my Vonna bags do, but they're what I have to do until I can get my back going, get my sewing machine and my ironing it. So, so that's the plan on my rotation. That's been the plan all along is to start things new and also pull from my treasury of, um, of unfinished projects that are beautiful, that I love, but I stalled out on for some reason. Maybe because one day I couldn't find a color of floss and so I got frustrated and put the whole thing up for five years. That's something I would do. So this one is called Flora Virginia Home, no, Homes, not Homes. Homes sampler. And I saw this years ago on Plum Street Stampler's blog. She had gone somewhere. Paulette Stewart had gone somewhere where there was a really big cross stitch store. I don't think that it was Shepherd's Bush, but it was somewhere where they just had samplers all over the wall. Are the dogs still out there? He is going to burn up. Is there a bowl of water out there for him? Um, and I was looking through the pictures, but I said, oh, what is that sampler? That sampler right there, that sampler is the most perfect sampler for me I needed in my life. And she told me, and I got it, and I started it, and then it round up as a UFO. It says, the cottage girl. Oh, who will buy my roses? They are fading like my youth. But never like these roses shall wither Flora's truth. Um, I'm going to put shall never wither God's truth because I have no idea what Flora's truth is. I don't know what Michelle's truth is most days, and I wouldn't give a penny for it. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend anybody else give a penny for Michelle's truth. Uh, so I'm going to substitute God's truth for that. Um, okay, now. Hanging threads, Whew. and I'm proud of myself. I've actually done some of the 101, the one over one. So this, I've worked on it, I worked on it for three days when it first entered in my new rotation. But as you can tell, I was not that far from, I mean, there's no reason I put, should have put this down. I think I messed up somewhere in this tree, but it's a tree, it's leaves, that can be easily fudged. Her face must be one over one. Her little arm and her feet are one over one. But, and then I've done most of the one over one up here. The cottage, I need to put girl there. There is absolutely no excuse for having thrown this in a tub for years and not finished it. So, Flora is back in my rotation. I mean, it's beautiful. She's beautiful. It's roses, and it's a pithy little verse, and it's a, it's a, um, it's a unique little verse. Who will buy my roses? They are fading like my youth. Well, now he wants to come in. Mary Margaret. I don't know how to pause this. Okay, so I didn't pause it. It looks like I just started I started over, so I hope that doesn't push the goodwill of my, my editor. So, I added that. That's not a new start, but that is new to my rotation. And then I started Sheepish Designs. And this, let's see, this must be the large $3.99 size. And this is the $2.99 size and then there's a $1.99 size which is really really small the only thing you'd want to keep in there is maybe your um, pins for journaling so there's the medium and the small 
Flora's in the large. I, I just ordered an assortment. So, Sheepish Designs started out, if you look at their early designs, they're very, a lot of them are reproductive, reproductive samplers. A lot of them are reproduction samplers, and um, now all I can think is that I also want to start that Birds and the Bees with, um, with 69 that McKenna started. It looks so beautiful in 69. Um, if you look at Sheepish Designs in the beginning, it was a lot of reproduction samplers, or the style was an antique traditional sampler style. Eventually, um, Dawn Bradford and her si sister-in-law, Cynthia Bradford, Cynthia Bradford, they separated their businesses and Cynthia Bradford went on to do little by little designs. And um, Dawn Bradford's work got quirkier, less, I mean, still traditional motifs, but just a quirkier spin. And this is one of the, you see we're up in the 110th exemplary for this one. So this is a quirkier spin. We've got our alphabet, we've got our sheep, we've got our hillocks, we've got our flowers, and we've got our birds. We've got all the ingredients for our sampler. But there's just something a little quirky about that. Can you see that well? There's just something a little odd about it. So I'm doing this on a piece of 40 count birch Newcastle um, one over two and this is where I am I did have to go I think it called for the sheep to be done in 822 or maybe an ecru but I think I went to it wasn't yeah 822 but I wound up doing it in 3865 and it's a little too bright but um, I'm not going to stitch four of those sheep and not be able to see them. So I like that. I like these subtle, these very subtle swirls that are in Confederate gray. They're very, very light and subtle. This one is a lot of fun to work on. It's a lot of fun. So I'm really enjoying that one, and I'm glad I started it on a whim. It's not one that I had planned to start. Um, I started it on a whim. So, um, I'll show you a couple of things that I've gotten. I have not gotten ink circles, birds and the bees, um, even though my husband ordered some stuff on Amazon and this was, and this was in the cart, so he went ahead and got it. Um, these variegated DMC threads. And I needed, I think I need, needed, these extra two 115 but also when I saw that I had the 69s I thought well I need that and now I need to get the ink circles so I ordered from 123 stitch and the things I've gotten there's a real theme it seems like a real strong red theme and the other night I was playing with my new things and I was lining them up and I was thinking I could just chuck my whole rotation and I could just have six of these. And I was, which, yeah, I'm not gonna do that though. So again, Heartstring Samplery. This is an older one, I mean, not terribly old, but it's one I've looked at for a while. And it's um, my Funny Valentine, Sweet Comic Valentine. So this is not your typical, this is a song. This is not your typical sampler verse. You make me smile with my heart, stay little Valentine, stay. Um, I like the song. I, I think it's hysterical to have this traditional red work sampler. Um, it's, it's like what she does with her coffee series. You know, she has her traditional sampler theme and then she adds something to it, um, adds words to it that, you know, are a little off, wall, off the wall. So I cannot wait to start this one. Now, it called for three skeins of Gentle Arts Country country redwood and it's pretty I ordered one skein to see if I liked it it's pretty it doesn't really do anything for me um, this looks highly variegated in the picture and I always want it to look like the picture so I thought I would 
Yeah, I have told myself I was going to start it. So I thought this DMC 115, it look, it's much strong, more strongly variegated. Uh, I guess I'm not even trying to focus it, am I? What do people do? They always put their hand up. I thought, why not try it with that? Um, so I think I may try it with that. I ordered a piece of 40 count platinum and I'd like to get two or three designs on this. Um, so just about everything I want to start is on 40 count. Um, so I've just got to figure out how I want to cut this up. Um, but I think that would be beautiful, hanging next to a wall of traditional samplers. So I got that at one, two, three stitch. And the next thing, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It could have been the painkillers I've been taking. It could have been the muscle relaxers I've been taking. I don't know. I mean, it's it's Stacy Nash, so it's not ugly. I don't know. What do you think about these? She has a series of these. You know how I was making fun of those reindeer a while ago? I had a calico cat named Bonnie. That made me think of Bonnie. And I like how on the back, it's like a little sewing aid. What do you think about that? I got some flax linen, which looks a little lighter than what's maybe R&R. &R. Uh, it was called for 32, 35 count Weeks Dye Works Linen Confederate Gray. Which looks cheaper. And it's mostly going to be covered up anyway. I don't know. What do you think about this? Do you think I've gone off into the Easter Bunny land again? Or do you think... What do you think about this? Oh, is it time to go? We'll break a leg. I love you. Bye. Bye. Bella has been at drama camp this week. And this weekend and next weekend, they're doing their production of The Little Mermaid. Um... Do you have your EpiPen? Yeah, EpiPen. Yes. You can go without shoes. You can't go without an EpiPen. Uh, do we take a banana or an apple or something? We'll be fine. You will not be fine. Jerry, make her take an apple, please. Jerry's just dropping her off. He and Mary Margaret are going to go tonight. I'm going to go tomorrow. I went and saw the dry run yesterday. So what do you think? You think I've, this is muscle relaxer purchase or? I do like cats. So I got that. And I got one more chart that may go on that 40 count platinum. A good and proper home. And I know that it looks tongue in cheek and or sniffy, one or the other, either tongue in cheek or you know snobby to put something up in your house that says a good and proper home. But I like it. I want to think that I've provided a good and safe home at any rate. Uh, my husband works for uh, juvenile justice. I couldn't tell you the name of the part of the state government. I could tell you initials, but I don't know what they stand for. Um, and before that, he was a juvenile judge. And before that, he prosecuted for defects which I guess has different names in different states. It's the Department of Children and Family Services in Georgia. So um, he's seen a lot of kids that didn't have um, a good and proper home. I mean, what they need, they need love and they need to be safe. They need to be safe. And um, I, uh, I'm not the best housekeeper in the world. I mean, I try and I have a, a schedule, a housekeeping schedule, but the past four months, since March with my back. That has been thrown to the absolute wind. I'm messy. I'm creative. I'm untidy. Um, I wipe everything down with Clorox wipes, but it's, you know, I wipe all my untidy messes down. Um, years and years ago when he was prosecuting for defects, he was really frustrated, I guess, about the house one day and yelled at me that he had taken children away from homes cleaner than ours.
but um, how clean your house is is not the point. I mean, if there's cockroaches and you know pet mess all over the place, but um, a good and proper home. I'm not thinking proper like you know everything is in its place and perfectly tidy. I'm thinking a safe, loving, a safe, loving home is an important thing that all all kids need. Anyway, I like it. I don't think it's snobby. I don't think it's tongue in cheek. I think it's what all kids deserve. And maybe I should have made this years ago as a reminder. As a reminder. But when I think proper, I think safe and loving. I don't think <laughs> tidy. <laughs> yeah, it, tidy doesn't really occur to me when I think of that. All right, so the next little pack of things to show you. I discovered Stash Unload a couple months ago, and I unloaded some stash, um, and I'd like to unload some more stash. <clears throat> but I realized that to get things, you've got to keep on it. You've got to keep watching. And when you're laid up in bed or on the couch, and you can't garden, and you can't do anything, well, you just help yourself to some stash unload. So, I went ahead and got the ubiquitous, but deservedly so. Um, first I drank the coffee. And I've enjoyed watching everybody's color choices and fabric choices, but I think I'll probably do it in these colors. As long as when I buy the threads, they actually look like this. Um, I want it to look like this. So just really, really want all the heartstring sample right now. I got this, um, John and Abigail. I really want all the Plum Street samplers too. And then like three days after I ordered it, my husband said, um, oh, you know, we're running out of things to watch like everybody else because we've watched everything. It's like, well, let's watch the, the John Adams little mini series that came on. Um, so we've been watching that. I think we have one more episode to go on that. But I, th I thought it was funny that it was right after I'd ordered this. And tonight, today's the 17th, tonight, Turn is finally coming back on. So I'm really looking forward to that. I probably won't get to watch it tonight because Jerry and Mary Margaret will be at Bella's play. And um, if I watched it without him, I'd not be happy. Um, I got this. Sometimes I order uh, sheepish designs and sheepish antiques because I missed them somewhere along my years of stalking them. A lot of the ones I don't have, I don't have because I don't want them. And this was, this one was kind of, mm, I want it, I don't want it, I don't know, it's not a priority, but it was a good price. And it was a good cost too, right? Helping somebody else unload some stash so they can buy more stash. Now the next ones. The next ones are good. Well, this one isn't fantastic, but I thought that would be the prettiest uh, bed pillow, and there's no back stitch. That is some really nice shading there, and no back stitch. That would be a pretty, pretty cushion. Counted thread cross stitch. Aster Place. I don't know that I've ever heard of them. That would be a pretty cushion. So I got that. And then I love La Dee Da. So I got Peaceful Ways. And this is from several different sellers over several different weeks. <laughs> this was not one incredible jackpot. So it says, Oh, gentle words and peaceful ways. So that's nice. I'd never seen this one from Lottie Da. A very simple Adam and Eve, which would, you know, go with any Adam and Eve wall. All right, and then. Yeah. Okay, this one was actually from eBay. I think I paid $6 for it. And then shipping and handling. Are you ready for this? Did I pay 11? No, I paid 11. The Scarlet House. I love the Scarlet House. 
and I'd followed that blog for years. Her designs are amazing. Her reproductions are amazing. Well, that is the same word, reproduction. What did I think it was? Reproduction. A reproduction sampler. Well, that's the same word. What did I say a while ago? I don't even know if I want to cut that out. I don't even want to know if what I said. These are very expensive charts for me. I think $24 is an expensive chart. Now, I'm not saying it's not worth it. And I know that it's $24 because it's got to be a lot of work to reproduce a chart, to come up with colors that match, to try to figure out places where the stitching has come loose or has been damaged. It's a lot of work. and But it's just not always something I can afford. Um, but this was for $11 on eBay. And you know, I'm always a sucker for hills. That's beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so let me show you the other two. Uh, so I got two more Scarlet House on Stash Unload. So that was eBay, now we're back to Stash Unload. I love this. Trisha, at Three Owl Threads. She, well, I'm a little confused. Um, I haven't been sleeping well at night. I can sleep during the day like like nobody's business. <laughs> but at night, I, my uh, pain medicine doesn't work at night, apparently. Only works during the day, doesn't work at night. So I watch YouTube. And I started watching Trisha at Three Owl Threads um, a couple of months ago. And then, a week or so ago, I realized, well, she's at episode 53. That means there's 53 that I can go back and watch. And so, late at night, I would start watching. Um, I started watching from number one, Trisha at Three Owl Threads. And um, she's probably not watching. And don't tell her that I'm this huge stalker that watches her all night long. And so, you know, I'd get tired and I'd think, well, I'll just close my eyes and then when, she, when she's talking. And then when she shows something, I'll, I'll wake up. And then, you know, I'd go to sleep and I'd have to, I'd have to rewind it because I couldn't stay asleep. I needed to finish the episode. And I think I'm on like 25 or 26 now. And I saw that she had a new one out, a whip parade. And I love a good whip parade. But I can't watch it because I'm halfway through the 54 episodes and I need to finish it on out. So thank you, Trisha at Three Owl Threads for helping me get through this event in my life, this episode in my life. Um, and sorry, I'm, I'm a stalker and I watch all your things from the very beginning. But she anyways, before I started watching the new ones, I mean the old ones. So in one of her newer ones, she was talking about buying this red silk thread from Australia, from Silks for You. Silks, the number four, and the letter U. And I think that that dyer, it was part of Dinky Dyes at one time. And so she was talking about this red thread, red silk thread, and I've ordered it and I'm waiting for it. But I'm wondering if this might be a good one to try the red out on. The, um, the dyer has a color that's like 500 DMC that might be good here. And then maybe just, I would, and then, you know, I could, the dyer has dark browns and blacks. So the only other thing I would need would be this taupey yellow color. And I could buy one really expensive taupey yellow silk. But the other ones would be done in the very affordable um, silk from Australia because I don't do silks, because I haven't been building up a collection of silks for years and years, because, I mean, DMC is fine, but I kind of thought I might try it on this one, since it's, there's just very few colors, um, but this is beautiful, I love it, I love the alphabets, that's really beautiful, and that was from Stash Unload, and then, today, this came in the mail, this one from Stash Unload, and I've never seen this before. Uh, so again, the Scarlet House, it's a reproduction, Mary Ann Farmer, and just look at all those yummy, yummy berries and flowers and birds. And I was looking at the DMC colors, I think it might be a little brighter when it's, um, 
not much brighter. There's a 902 in here. That would be a good bit darker. That's just, I mean, that's just beautiful. This is called for 40 count doubloon linen from Picture This Plus. Really, really, really think that's beautiful. So three Scarlet House samplers. I'm over the moon. Um, so now you see why I wanted to just chuck my rotation and start a new one. There's one other chart that I got. Well, that's a lie. That's one other one other chart that I got that has come to my house. And it's Little House Needleworks, the Elizabeth Hancock sampler. And again, just beautiful reds and greens. Um, there's Belle Soie silk, an over-dyed cotton conversion, which is probably what I'd use, and a DMC conversion. I think I'd use the over-dyed cotton conversion. And this was stitched on 30 count Weeks Dye Work straw linen. I think that I would like to stitch it on 40 count. I um, I think I, I, don't know, I keep thinking I've come to the end of my days of stitching with two threads. Um, 40 count doesn't bother me. I like stitching with um, with one thread. I can't get good coverage with one thread on 35 or 36. I've stitched, um, you know, a forest screw. That's in my UFO pile for the time being. It's on 35 or 36 count fabric and I stitched it with one thread. And I'm gonna finish it, but I'm not completely happy with the way those dark greens, some of those dark greens look with one thread. I think I stitched, I stitched a um, Lilac Studio bouquet of roses. It's framed upstairs, I'll show that to you sometime. Um, it's beautiful, I stitched it 20 years ago. Um, and it's stitched two threads over 36 count. And boy, I cannot believe how dense that is. So, if I'm gonna use one thread, I need to use 40 count. And I don't want everything to be teeny tiny, but I'm just not in the mood anymore to stitch with two threads. I'm gonna finish out everything I have. Started, obviously, but where I can, I really wanna go to 40 count. So, um, I'm not gonna do knitting today because the socks are hither and yon. And I did an impromptu book, I captured the castle. That's a really sweet one. I think I might like to, I think I might like to get that one on, on audio. Um, it's just, it's charming. It's quirky. Um, it's a coming of age novel, but it's not, not like Jane Eyre, which I know everybody loves except for me. Um, it's not a, it's a coming of age in a very quirky family, in a quirky time. Um, and it's in a crumbly castle with a moat, you know, who wouldn't want to be a teenage girl in a crumbly castle with a moat? But I think that's one that I'd like to get on audio tape and listen to um, every year, every two years. Mary Margaret has summer reads that she rereads every summer. And she has winter reads. She's, she's much more organized than her mother or her father or her sister. We're not sure where she came from. <laughs> We're just, she's very organized. Very organized, very regulated. She has a lot of rules. I don't know where they came from, but she likes to reread books. And um, yeah, I think that might be a nice, a nice summer read. I may go and see if I have any audible credits, although I am reading Dr. Thorne because I saw there was a mini series based on Dr. Thorne. And Dr. Thorne is the third book in the Barchester Towers, in the Barchester series. So it went The Warden, Barchester Towers, and then Dr. Thorne. So I'd, I'd really like to finish that before I watch the mini miniseries. So I'm listening to that on Audible. And then I have just been enjoying all of your, um, all of your podcasts. I don't think I've actually watched TV except with Jerry, you know, just watching. We've been watching um, John Adams, and then we'll start watching Turn, um, I guess, tomorrow night. But I've just been watching podcasts um, and enjoying them so much. 
So thank you. Thank you for making podcasts. If you don't make podcasts, thank you for commenting and being part of the community. Um, there's more than one way to be part of this community. Podcasting is not the only way. Being a commenter, um, keeping in touch on Facebook and Instagram. Oh my goodness, Instagram. Um, but thank you for all your well wishes. I know a lot of you have contacted me and um, were concerned um, about my back. Um, so it's a bulging disc, which I know many people have. Apparently people have it that don't even know they have it, just depending on if it's bulging onto a nerve or not. So I, um, I empathize and sympathize with all of you who have back pain. Um, it's so odd when I go to the grocery store now and I see people walking and I'm watching people now. And I mean, every, every third person is limping. Every third person is, is, is walking with some sort of discomfort. That's amazing. I mean, it's overwhelming, actually, uh, how many people are um, in discomfort. And I guess it's just a question of how gracefully they handle it or um, how good their pain management is. So thank you for all your concern. And thank you for um, continuing to talk to me on Facebook and Instagram, even though it's been a long time since I've um, made an episode. And I hope that I'll be back in two weeks because that's much more manageable. And I hope that um, don't keep putting such good stuff up on stash load because <laughs> stash unload because I uh, my resistance is down. <laughs> so I am going to go now and I hope y'all all have a lovely uh, rest of your weekend. And until I see you again, goodbye.